Aloha, and welcome to Restaurants Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii. I am your host, Cheryl Matsuoka, the Executive Director of Hawaii Restaurant Association. And today I have two guests. I'm going to have them introduce themselves. Hey, Joe, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is uh, Joe Sanchez from Daniel's Western Meat Packers here in Peak River, California, uh, in the Los Angeles area. Uh, we are a full service. Uh, food service distributor and processor, and we are a certified USDA organic plant also. Uh, we service uh, restaurants, hotels, uh, amusement parks, uh, resorts, and also we do a retail line also, which we uh, service retail markets also. Thank you, Joe, and welcome to the show. Hey, Richard, Richard, could you introduce yourself? Yeah, this is Richard C. I'm the CEO of Hawaii Robotic. So we are the ro uh, robot supplier for Hawaii Market and uh, Pacific Rims. So yeah, we distributed um, all the restaurant robot, hotel robot, and even some of the um, outdoor robots. Thank you, Richard. Thank you for joining me today. Today, we're recapping the Hawaii Hotel and Restaurant Show, which was held on March 30th and 31st at the Hawaii Convention Center. And I thought that this would be a really important conversation. The Hawaii Hotel and Restaurant Show is the official show of the Hawaii Restaurant Association, the Hawaii Lodging and Tourism Association, and STAR Events. Gentlemen, I have received so much feedback about the show. And I've been getting texts, phone calls, and emails. And it's from companies who had booths at the show. You know, they shared how valuable it was for them to participate and get a booth at the show. And in fact, on the morning of the second day, I received a message from someone at like 6.40 in the morning. And they said they already, after the first day, had 21 solid contacts and even one potential international contact. So already after the first day, it was already a huge success for that person. So basically, if nobody showed up, he was already a happy camper. So I just wanted to, to say a little bit about what he said. He said, Cheryl, I am a booth holder, and for him, it's an investment. Um, 2020, 2021 was a really rough year for him. And the reason it was rough is his business really relies on the restaurant and food service industry as the restaurants were shuttered for the two two years and it was very slow foot traffic it impacted his business it impacted his livelihood and basically it brought tears to my eyes because this show was the first show after two years so it was so important for him to participate even though he had a very tough financial two years he was willing to make that investment and reserve a booth after the first day, it was definitely worth it from him. So today, I felt it was important that we hear from two participants, and the two of you had boots at our show. And, you know, I spoke to almost every restaurateur that came to the show, and I made it a point to go to every booth and speak to every person who had a booth as to how they felt about the show. So can I please give Joe an opportunity to share with us how was the show for you, Joe? And would you be participating in 2023? Um, the show was, was really great for us. Uh, just to get some new contacts and to reconnect with our old contacts also. We haven't been in Hawaii for two years now. And uh, I've been doing a show in Hawaii for over 10 years. So I'm just kind of used to always planning a food show in Hawaii uh, to come on and show our products. Um, we did get some new interest, which was great for us. And even just having a one or even two new customers uh, pays off for us extremely. Um, just to be able to service Hawaii with some natural and organic meats and, and some items that they have not seen before is a pleasure to me to be able to supply them with that. And just to see the, the happiness in everybody's faces is that they're able to come to the show and, and to see each other because it's like old friends again and just seeing everybody and and just knowing that uh, you know we're gonna be we're gonna be in a good place for now on and and just see increased increased business. 
That is awesome. Hey, Joe, talk a little bit about that um, product that you have, the new product that you are featuring at the show. It's called Pastor. Pastor Ray's Regenerative Agriculture Meats. And what that is, is farmers that are now tending more into the earth now. So they're uh, regenerating the soil and back into the earth and just getting away from pesticides and herbicides that are sprayed on crops. And what they're doing is um, uh, regenerating the earth, which would mean like just like composting almost into the soil. And what that does is make a better ecosystem. Uh, it's a minimizes the carbon footprint and it just makes the animals be a little healthier in, in a raising environment. And for us consumers, of uh, just knowing that we're, we're eating and uh, healthier meat or from animals that are being raised uh, humanely and in a good environment. And that's so important, Joe. As I mentioned, this was the first time that you were presenting that product. And I was I received some education from you about that whole process. So thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being a part of the show and educating us that this is even this is even something that is some farmers are doing out there. So thank yes, you. Yes, you're welcome. And yes, we will be back next year. Oh, thank you, Joe. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. And, you know, I, I got to eat some of his yummy samples. So I wanted to thank you for that also. Everybody in our booth really enjoyed the food that you provided for us. So thank you so much. You're welcome. And, and you know, that's what the show is all about, Joe. You said exactly that. You know, people haven't seen each other for two years. We didn't have a show. And so everybody was so excited to come to the show, which is why you saw so many rush restaurant tours and people in the food service industry attending the show. And a lot of them, you know, wish they had had booths in the show and they didn't. So I'm, I'm thinking, you know, we're going to have to get a bigger space next year in 2023. Okay, Richard, I had, I also had walked over to your booth and I was able to do some tastings also. So why don't you share with our viewers a little bit about what you were presenting at the Hawaii Hotel and Restaurant Show? Yeah, Cheryl, this is an amazing experience for us because we had a new uh, exhibit in, in the show. So during the show, we had the, the um, uh, co uh, coffee um, uh, cocktail uh, robot, we had the uh, cooking robot, we had the hotel robot, and we also had the um, um, uh, restaurant delivery robot. And out of the blue, and we get so many customers talk to us. They, they people asking for outdoor robots. They asking for landscape robot. They asking for bathroom cleanup robots. And so we 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 sharing a lot of um, um, new things with the, our customers. And overall, we have over seventy restaurants express their interest, and we have hotels, and we have bars, nightclubs, and everybody is interested in the robot. I guess it's just because the, the labor shortage in the last two years uh, triggered the, um, the innovation of the industry. So people are thinking about the alternative and, you know, here we are. So definitely we'll come again this next year and uh, hopefully we can uh, visit all our customers in this coming few weeks and measure the location and then <clears throat> make sure a robot is um, durable in every single <clears throat> um, owner's place. Well, Richard, I want to talk about a little bit about what you served me. You know, we went over and there was a robot that was um, dancing. I guess that's the coffee making robot and then the delivery robot. Right. And then you had a, a robot that actually made me fried rice. And then the delivery robot delivered to me as I was sitting in a chair across the booth. Yes. Why don't you share a little bit about that whole fried rice delivery process? Oh, okay. So yeah, we have a robot that can memorize 100 recipes. So basically for the workers, they can just memorize a number and they can cook fried rice, fried chicken, whatever they, they can memorize it. So example for the fried rice, we display in six minutes, 30 pounds of fried rice have been cooked. 
So, and then they would put it in the, on the tray and then the delivery robot can deliver it to, to the guests um, on every single table. So it's an amazing experience for the, the show participants to, to enjoy it. So everybody tastes it and then everybody say, hey, that's, that's the taste that's similar to a, a big chef, you know, a master chef. Yeah. Exactly. And it was very good and very quick. I was just so impressed by how quick the fried rice was cooked and then delivered to me as I sat in the chair across the booth, you know, just to experience the whole process. Very, very, it was a very, very interesting. Um, in Hawaii, is there anybody currently that has any robot technology in Hawaii currently? Uh, no. Um, actually, we're the first comer in the market. Yeah, actually, we have the exclusive right in Hawaii and Guam. Very nice, Richard. Very nice. So we can expect to see your robots then not only at restaurants, but also, like you said, in hotels and even in bars and, and doing different things throughout um, the operations, correct? Yes. Very good. You know, another another message that I had received, gentlemen, from all of these emails and calls, which is so greatly appreciated because feedback is so important. And, you know, what we can do in 2023 and can we should we get a bigger venue? Should we get a bigger location? Because I know we're going to sell out more boots this year. We had one hundred and twenty two um, companies reserve over 200 booths. So every booth was taken, as you could see, and it was very, it was very well attended. Um, I don't have how many people actually walked the shows yet, but I am going to be getting that statistic at our recap meeting coming up soon. Cisco was there in force. They had 28 booths. Domino's, they're awesome. They um, had booths there and they were getting giving a validation, a partial validation. And also they delivered pizzas to all of the booth participants. Um, people were flying in from as far as Japan and the Indonesian trade promotion company of Los Angeles flew in a, a lot of their furniture. It's an investment. And I wanna speak to Joe first because Joe, I understand you're out of California that you flew in was it three people from Daniel's Meats? Yes, we flew in three people. Right. And so Daniel's Meats flew in three people. They had to get hotel rooms, rental cars. And so this is also a boost to Hawaii's economy. So we want to thank you for making that investment. It's not only about the booth cost, but it's also about the whole expense, right, to, to bring personnel in and the hotel and the rental car. Richard, I know you're from here, but you brought in a team. So how many people did you fly in for the show? Yeah, we flew in four people from California and um, uh, Las Vegas, you know, the tech people so they can do the demos, you know, smoothly. Very nice. Very nice. So thank you, gentlemen, for that investment. And I know many others. I, I spoke to those two um, people that flew in from Japan for their breads. And it was very, their commitment was huge. You know, they're here looking for a distributor for their bread product. And they were meeting with people in the evenings and out there, you know, sampling. So it was very, it was very well worth it for them. Something else that I did want to talk about was the educational seminars at the HHRS. We also had numerous educational seminars, and I had an opportunity to speak to some of the speakers. And, you know, one of them was our Department of Health. Peter spoke. Um, there was um, the Digi Vortex. Doug Harris spoke. So I don't know if the two of you had an opportunity to see any of the seminars. Um, I did not. I did. I did look at the program, and there were some really good, interesting uh, topics to be discussed. So I wanted to catch one, but unfortunately, I wasn't able to. Yeah, you were busy working your booth, huh? Yes. yes. <laughs> How about you, Richard? Did you catch any of the seminars? Yes, I do. And actually, I did a presentation myself too on the second days, and then it's a it's a really good. Um, um, participation and also uh, share, discuss with the audience about the robots. Um, we, you know, so many um, audience about talking about, you know, they, they need the AI function of it. And then we share all the future view of how the, um, this delivery robot can help in the, 
uh, restaurant owners and to making their management or supply more efficiently. Yeah, I really love it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for participating in the seminars. You know, educating, constantly educating our industry is something that the Hawaii Restaurant Association really works on. So as you all, as you two walked around the show and Thank you, because the two of you had new technology and new processes, especially um, Daniel's Meats. Did you notice anything else that was new or anything else that was different that you've never seen before at a show? Well, um, well like Richard's robots were something different I haven't seen. Um, here in California, they, there are some robotic uh, waiters going around, but... Um, Richard has some nice dancing ones there too that were pretty fun to look at. Uh, but I think the future might be into the robotics. Um, they're talking in here in California, they're in Los Angeles, they're talking a little a lot about that, you know, with unfortunately with the workforce and, and everything like that, it's helping it will help labor out a little bit. I think the future is bright for that industry also. Um, one thing I did see was Uncle Jim's um plant-based wagyu, which was um Quite surprisingly tasty. <laughs> being being the, in the meat, uh, real meat industry, um, you know, we kind of front upon plant-based things, but, you know, we're open to everything. And um, and that was really, really tasty what he had. And um, plant-based products are, are gaining traction here and and being a thing of, of, of the future here also. Um, there was also the uh, Paga's, uh, sorbet pog, which was, I haven't seen anywhere. I think it's a new item. So that's, that's pretty nice. <laughs> and thank you. That's what the show is all about, right? right. The latest, the greatest, the newest, yes. sort of like yours, um, your process um, with the, with the farms. Mm -hmm. You're right. I was going to mention uncle Jim. So thank yeah. you so much for mentioning <laughs> uncle Jim's because he actually delivered some to my booth and said, Cheryl, you need to taste this mm -hmm. only because as you know, um, gentlemen, my husband is a vegetarian. Mm -hmm. So we're always looking for vegetarian vegan sure. options. And so really and truly that steak was you couldn't tell it was made out of vegetables and very impressive. And that was the theme, you know, through this show, because I also saw a couple of other um, boots that had vegetarian offerings. And you're right. It is as people are looking at options, that is a very popular trend. So Richard, did you see anything new or different at the show? Or did you even have a chance to walk away from your booth? <laughs> I don't even have time to walk around. But it was but it's an amazing experience. I get lieutenant governors and senators and Japanese uh, um, counselors and you know um, uh, movie uh, mayors, you know, it's all at a booth talking with us. And, um, you know, it's just really amazing. We even have a state um, unemployment office. Um, they were talking with us for almost an hour and thinking about using a robot to, to do the um, labor training for, for the, you know. So people are thinking about um, this new technology, how to help them. You know, this is, this is so amazing, you know. It's, it's, it's a crazy experience for me. Well, I'm so glad because you are so correct. You know, not only did I see everyone from the Lieutenant Governor, from Mayor Blangiardi, from Mayor Victorino, who flew in from Maui, but so many people came to the show to check it out because this show really is the launching of our opening of our conventions, you know, proving that we could safely have these types of shows at this large capacity, again, right, 200 booths at the convention center, and we can do it safely. And everyone there was just like, like you said, um, Joe, so happy to see everybody. You know, we are an industry. And as Joe mentioned, you know, Joe's been coming here to Hawaii for these types of shows for, is it over 10 years, Joe? Over 10 years now, yes. Yes. And yes. this is our second show. We would have had two others, but of course the pandemic came, mm -hmm. but this is our second show. So the first one was in 2019 and this one in 2022. So yes, you've been coming here very often that's how well we've known each other all these years and from the industry you know the the contacts 
the, co the connections and the relationships is what's so important when you come to these shows, right, Joe? You know, you mentioned Uncle Jim, who is also in the same industry that you are. Yes, yes. Um, and not only uh, at the show, but even uh, after the show, going to dinner at some of these uh, restaurants that we provide meat to and just talking to owners and chefs and and just seeing the occupancy um, levels increasing. Uh, they're looking at 90% occupancy level uh, pretty soon. So um, now they get to expand their menus more and uh, open up more tables. So uh, for the economy, then that's really great in Hawaii. Yes, we're so excited for that. Joe, you're so right. We just, you know, everybody's so optimistic looking at what's the future brings. And right now we're getting ready for a huge summer. Spring break is over and we're getting ready for a huge summer. So everybody's gearing up and bringing employees in. So Joe, there was a picture that you took with a famous chef. <laughs> and I wanted to, because I brought him over to your booth because yes. I knew that you would be impressed. So do you want to share with our audience a little bit about what you and he talked about, because it, I saw it was a private conversation. Yeah, so uh, Master uh, Chef Food Network star Graham Elliott uh, came by the booth, and I will just going over some of the items and meat items that I, I have here uh, shown in the Hawaii show. Um, and he was impressed with the uh, pasture raise and the regenerative practices for animals. And... Um, yeah, he would just take a good interest to it. And uh, my, myself, I always get starstruck everywhere I go. I always uh, show last month here in May, I took a picture with another chef. So I like having that in my repertoire a little bit. You know? <laughs> but uh, yeah, Graham Elliott, uh, chef at Pounders at the Polynesian Cultural Center. So uh, he's a he's a world-renowned chef. So it's just um, it's just nice to talk to somebody that comes by and, and you could uh, show your products and he has an interest in it. Exactly. And if you send me that picture, I will get him to autograph it and send it back to you, oh, Joe. Awesome. I'd love to send. I love yes. that. Yes. I would do that for you. He <laughs> was very impressed by the show. As you mentioned, he's over there at the Pounders restaurant at the Polynesian Culture Center and really making it a destination restaurant. People have just been raving about his food. Um, um, gosh, I can't even remember, guys. Has it been two, a month? As it had been a month already, he was one of our featured chefs of Aloha at our Hall of Fame. And everybody was so impressed by his food offering. So yes, yes, it's always nice to have government officials, celebrities, um, you know, different chefs walking through. I don't know if you saw Chef Chai, gentlemen. Chef Chai was there. I got to hug Chef Chai. I haven't seen him in a while. He just opened a new restaurant in Waikiki. And I said, Chef, during a pandemic, when all the restaurants were struggling, here you here you are opening a new restaurant in Waikiki, and he said, "Cheryl, that's what restaurant tours do. It's in it's in their blood, right? They are entrepreneurs." And so he opened up Kalo, a new Hawaiian food restaurant, right there in Kuhio Avenue. So I got to speak with Chef Chai. So every restaurant tour, every restaurant owner that came by, they stopped by the Hawaii Restaurant Association booth just to say hi, because it's been two years that we haven't seen each other. It was just nice to see everybody again. And as I mentioned, the purpose of this conversation today was, you know, was the HHRS, the Hawaii Hotel and Restaurant Show, was it valuable, you know, to the people who reserve booths, who made an investment, who flew in their staff or flew in, flew in themselves, rented hotel rooms and rental cars, you know, was it valuable? And what I'm hearing, gentlemen, is was it valuable? Uh, yes, it was. Yes, it was. You know, just, um, you know, it's just the excitement again. It's the excitement again. And, and when you think of Hawaii, beaches and the sun but you know hawaii is coming out to be a great food destination also uh there's some chefs you know that are really doing great things there uh and just having a a, a creativity mind that's bringing different foods to hawaii uh, if, if you look i think now you have texas barbecue now in hawaii with sunset barbecue um, that's something new and just different different array of foods coming in there you know i did i did have a conversation with the lieutenant governor uh, I forgot that doctor, the doctor, correct? Yes, yes, yes. And, Dr. Josh he, and he thanked us for being there, but he did say, and he shook my hand and he says, 
we will never close again. So I think that's some positivity and some outlook for the future of the industry. That is so, oh, thank you for saying that, Joe. You're right. You know, we've had many meetings with him and he's, he's was constantly said the same thing that, you know, he understands how restaurants and businesses really suffered the last two years and, and the trickle down effect, how even for yourself, right, you supply the restaurants and the food service industry with your products. And so how it affected you, just like, like I said about the gentleman who texted me and said, you know, Cheryl, it was a rough two years and I made a commitment to reserve a booth, even though financially it was very tough because it impacted himself, right? His wallet. But he said it was worth it, so worth it. He's glad he made that investment and, and reserved the booth. So 2023, I will be sending out the dates as soon as we book it. So I'm hoping that I can count on you two gentlemen to reserve booths in our show in 2023, as soon as I have the date. Definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much. Then in closing, again, my name is Cheryl Matsuoka, the Executive Director of the Hawaii Restaurant Association. The Hawaii Restaurant Association is the voice of Hawaii's restaurants and food service industry. Should you have any questions about a future show or anything, just email me at info at hawaiirestaurant.org. Thank you, everyone. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.